are going to help us. You can read all you want about having a better love life, and it's not going to work. Is that right? That's very true. Uh, reading and getting self-help advice all impacts the thinking brain, but it doesn't impact the emotional brain very much at all. And really what impacts the emotional brain is the experience of relatedness, or the experience of being with somebody. So that's actually what changes people. And self-help advice, as well-meaning as it's intended to be, and even if it's very good advice, is not going to change anybody in a lasting way. Now, I know you're a scientist rather than one of these self-help people, but assume for one second that I am interested in a better relationship. I'm convinced of the uh, salutary effects that it will have on my health and my well-being. And, uh, but as you've also pointed out, relationships aren't easy. They need work. What do I do? Just spend more time with the individual and then over time my brain will find the right rhythm? Or am I just kind of doomed to muddle along? Well, it depends, of course, on you in an individualized sense, what you're doing in the relationship, how well you're performing. Let's say like if it were a tennis game, it depends on both your skill level and your partner's skill mm -hmm. level. The, uh, and sometimes you can coax your partner to a greater skill level and sometimes they can teach you uh, better things. There certainly are times when you would have to conclude, well, this person just is not up to the task of relating. Well, I was going to ask you, can, can you love practically anyone? No, I, no, I don't think so. Some people are not good enough at it, uh, first of all, so that they're just like, can you play tennis with practically anyone? No. Some people hit the ball into the net every time, and it's very unsatisfying to play with them, and eventually you give up. But there's also an element of um, specificity. Because what people uh, notice, which is very interesting, is that out of all the people in the world, out of all the six billion people there are, there's actually relatively few that people are interested in pursuing, mm -hmm. uh, kind of attracted or drawn yeah. to. Even out of those people, there's very few that people, even out of that selective set, really connect it's with. even narrower that, that people have a long-term successful connection. Why is that? Well, it's partly because in childhood, we learn to speak the emotional language of our parents in a sense, that they teach us how relationships work and how they ought to function, and we absorb that knowledge. And even though we were without realizing it, we may not know it, we may not even know that we've learned anything. And when we go out into the world, we gravitate towards people who know the same thing that we do, who speak our same emotional language. Now, among uh, other heresies that are uh, exploded <laughs> in, in the book is therapy. I mean, everyone goes, not everyone, many of us go to therapists in order to improve our love life. And you're saying that, again, therapy doesn't work, or if it does, certainly not the way we expect it to work. Well, therapy certainly can work, and it can be powerful some, for some people, but not in the way that most therapists, including most patients, think about it. Because um, if you realize that a relationship is really this biological, physiologic link between two emotional brains, then you, suddenly therapy appears in a whole new light. It's not just two people talking to one another, having a conversation. It's really this wireless emotional link and what's being performed in the therapy should be an experience of relatedness that's different than what the person experiences outside. And that's really the, the changing aspect of theory, or the, the mutative aspect of therapy, is that new relationship. Not, uh, say, uh, any particular insights, right. or any particular intellectual So, so it's knowledge. not the content of the therapy, per se, that may be helping. It's the fact that over time you might become more like the therapist. Precisely. Which is stable and reasonable and... Precisely. If you have a stable, reasonable therapist. Right, not right, everybody right. does. But people probably ought to be aware of that and ought to try and choose their therapist with a lot of care and discrimination because essentially you're asking to become more like that person.